We're in Windows 2012 R2. I'm going to show you how to set up an IPAM server. It's IP address management. And we have our domain controller here ready to go. It's all booted up. And we have our server where we installed IPAM. Now you can install IPAM in the uh, add remove, add roles and features. And next, 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 pass by roles. And you'll see it here in features. So I went ahead and installed that because it does take about 10-15 minutes to do that. And we wanted to keep the video moving. So we now have the IPAM server installed. And the first thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and open up IPAM management. And we'll go from there. All right, our IPAM is showing up on the left-hand side of the screen. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And by default, it's going to connect to the IPAM server locally. So number one is already done simply by logging in to the server as the administrator of the domain. Now make sure that you're not logging in locally to the computer. So if you're logging in locally, this will not work. All right, so let's go to step two, provision the IPAM server. And we get a wizard that comes up. Click next. And there's a couple of different options to go with. We're going to go with the group policy based provisioning, which is the default. And then we have a, a GPO name prefix. You can call it whatever you want. We're going to call it IPAM1. Next. All right. So we've gone ahead and selected the group policy based provisioning method. We're going to create all these things. If we want, we can click on learn more about that, but instead we're just going to go ahead and click apply. All right, went ahead and fast forwarded for you and we can see that it was provisioned successfully and it says IPAM1 in front of all these different uh, groups that we just created. So now we can go on and click close and we can go on to the next step, which is configure server discovery. So after we get configured to uh, server discovery, we want to go to uh, the domain, which is the root here, which is widget LLC that internal click add. And we're going to go ahead and leave all these boxes checked. And now we're going to go ahead and click on. Okay. I'll let you take a look at that for a second. And we're ready to go. Click. Okay. And now we're ready to go ahead and click Start Server Discovery. So we're going to see a little bar go across the top here. We're going to wait until it's completed. Click on More if you want. You can see what's going on. All right, the discovery process is done. That took about five minutes. And we can see that it did discover servers. All right, so let's go ahead and minimize that. And now we're going to go, go ahead and click select or add servers to manage. All right. And we're going to see DC01, which is exactly what we wanted. And it's showing up as blocked. So that's okay because we're going to do a few other things to give the rights that we need to make DC01 be allowed to be managed. Now you might be asking, why don't we make DC01 the IPAM server? And you can't do that because DC01 is a domain controller and you can only set up IPAM on a member server. All right, so let's give the rights that we need to allow the support server the access for IPAM. And what we want to do is open up Active Directory Users and Computers, and we're going to create a user. In this particular case, we're going to create a new user, and we'll call that user IPAM user. You don't have to do it that way, but you certainly can. Click Next, type in your complex password. and change to password never expires. All right, let's double click on our IPM user and let's click member of. Go to the add button and we're going to type domain admins. All right, check names, click OK, click apply. We're in good shape. So that's the first step. Next step is we're going to uh, give the support server a write as well. 
So let's search for the administrators group. And typically, uh, we'll find that in built in. Double click on administrators and click member of, pardon me, members, and then click add. And we're going to add in our support server. We have to change our objects to computers. All right, click apply. And now we've got some more rights that we need. All right, we're going to turn off the firewall on the server. Now, that's of course is not recommended, but you know, all the ports and things we need to open up to allow this to work is going to take longer than this particular uh, video is going to go. So uh, if you want to know, just do a quick search on TechNet as to what ports to open up to allow for IPAM to work. So let's go ahead and turn off the firewall. Of course, if you're in a trusted environment, it's probably going to be okay. And now we're going to run a command. We're going to pull up PowerShell. So we're going to right click on PowerShell, choose Run as Administrator. All right, so now we're in as the administrator. And now we have this command that we're going to type. So I'll bring it up here and allow you to pause the video at this time if you'd like in order to uh, copy that in. I've got that uh, in a notepad down here and we'll change the font so it's a little bit easier for you to see there we go so what this is going to do is it's going to add uh, group policy uh, objects that we need in order to allow all of the rights that we need for the support server to have access to the domain controller so go ahead and pause the video at this time go ahead and write all that down and you'll be able to uh, run those commands. It's all actually all one command. So if we take it off of word wrap, you'll see it's all one long command. So we're going to do that now. There we go. Let's try that one more time. There we go. And let's go ahead and run it. And this might take a 30 seconds or so to get going. Don't be too surprised. And we get a message that pops up. It says, what do we want to do? We want to press yes. And now it's creating everything that we want. Creating group policies, importing group policy objects, linking them all up. And now it's done. Now let's go into the group policy editor and make sure that everything is showing up open up server manager go into group policy management and there we are there's our three different group policies we just created using the shell that we just had all right now we want to go ahead and close the group policy manager and pull back up the shell and we're going to do a gp update slash force to apply all those group policies that we just added in. And you want to make sure that it actually says it was successful, which it was, so we're in good shape. All right, back on the support server, we're, we're going to see that we're still uh, blocked here on the IPAM server. So you want to right click on it and choose Edit Server and make sure you change it from Unspecified, which it is by default, to Managed, and then go ahead and click OK and you can hit the refresh and what's going to happen is, is it's going to show up as blocked for quite a while it might be five minutes it might be up to an hour but eventually after an hour at the most then this is going to show up as unblocked and you just keep hit, hitting refresh until you get that to happen so once you have that working you can go ahead and you can see all the different things that you can do in the uh, IPAM and let's start with the IP address blocks so if you want you can right click and cho you can choose edit IP address range and you can see the IP address starting IP address for DHCP uh, the different uh, type of DHCP uh, you know, assignment is dynamic etc etc so let's go ahead and cancel that one let's go to IP address inventory well currently we don't have anything going on in DHCP 
Uh, let's go down to, we have the range, and we edit IP address range. So this is the uh, scope itself. Under DNS and DHCP, you can see that uh, they're both running on DC01. So let's click on DNS, for instance, and you can launch the MMC. That will take you right to DNS on DC01. So if you have a lot of DNS servers, you'll see all those different ones there, as well as DHCP servers. Here's our scopes. Looks a little bit like uh, what we saw up here under address space. And again, you right click and edit it. Uh, and it takes you to a spot where uh, you can do just that. Change to 51 to 100. And you can say how long the uh, scope reservation will last. You can go to DNS updates. You can make some changes there. Under options. You can make some uh, DHCP scope options. This shows, for instance, our gateway address, which is .1. And here's our other information, such as DNS, etc. You can go into advanced and IP address dynamically uh, to clients. You can do DHCP, boot P, or both. Boot P is typically for Unix type clients. And you can see a summary of everything. Uh, it takes a little while for that to show up. And when you're done, you can click OK to apply or apply. Here's uh, zone monitoring. Uh, it has no data at this time. Give it a little bit more time, and it will show up. So that is uh, the IPAM server and IPv4. There's the same thing with IPv6. You can get some information. Uh, but most of the information you're going to see is under IPv4. Uh, so that's how you set up uh, the IPAM server on Windows 2012 R2.